Yeah. Good evening, participants. It is our great pleasure to welcome you all to the uh, Knowledge 4 Point webinar series. And this Knowledge 4 Point webinar series has been initiated uh, to enhance the knowledge of faculty members, researchers, and students' community uh, by Challenge for Technology. This Knowledge 4 Point webinar series is one of the unique and distinct initiatives of Challenge for Technology by means of calling the expert from the uh, various research organizations, various academic institutes from national and international people. So today we have Dr. Muhammad from Yale Science University, uh, Egypt, with us to deliver an excellent talk on mechatronics. It is our great pleasure to welcome him to the this wonderful forum. We welcome you, sir. OK, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, sir. Thank you, sir. And Chariyam uh, Shatakaji was established in the year 2010 by our honorable chairman, C. P. Sriram who is one of the well-known first-generation successful entrepreneur, industrialist, and managing director of MK Group of Companies. This webinar series is being successful uh, by his motivation and, and his support. So our institute is being within top 10 among all other private engineering colleges in Tamil Nadu. And it is my great pleasure on behalf of Chennai Technology to welcome all the participants. And I, I, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest, uh, Dr. Wonderful forum now, and Dr. Mohammed is associate professor uh, in mechanics in the department, and uh, uh, he is uh, he is having lot of experience and publication in the uh, mechanics system design, robotics that is industrial robotics, rehabilitation and robotics, mobile robotics and walking robotics, and control system design, and intelligent control automation. IoT based automation and pneumatic and hydraulic systems and biomechanics. So it is our great pleasure to give him, uh, have an expert like Dr. Mohammed uh, in this wonderful forum. Uh, he has published two books uh, that is in the name of Assistive Gale Wearable Robots from the Laboratory to the Real Environment and another one book uh, in the name uh, Ambulatory System for. Gate, man, man, gate monitoring and assessment. And he has published a lot of publications and he is one of the well-known person in robotics. And it is our great pleasure to have him and we are interested to hear a lot from you, sir. Welcome, you, sir. Okay, thank you. And let me start the presentation, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be a speaker, speaker today and uh, talk about uh, an interesting topic which is called uh, biomechatronics, biomechatronics in medical rehabilitation and healthcare. Uh, let's start first by talking about the disability definition. What is, what is the meaning uh, meaning by disability. Usually disability is defined as a physical or mental condition that limit a person movement, sense or activity. If we see the first photo here, the photo number one here, it's for lady which is amputated, which lost one of her limbs. So she this amputation, it will limit her movement. It will limit her daily, daily having activities. So they, she can't perform the usual activities she used to do. If you see the second photo, it's for, uh, uh, it's for wheelchair uh, user, which actually he used wheelchair, and he has obstacle, which is the stair. This is stair. This is there is limit. It's limit his mobility. It's kind of it's kind of environmental obstacle. So both persons are disabled. So let's think how the technology and how mechatronics can help these two persons, for example. So if we see the, this photo here, this photo. It's for Hugh Herr, which is one of the, uh, he is an associate professor at MIT, 
and he actually is the founder of Biomechatronic Lab at MIT. If you see here down below, he is amputated. He has both legs is amputated. He used his both leg when around he when he was 18 years old. So you here, he has a lot of talks, and usually in all of his talks, he mentioned that human are not disabled. A person can never be broken. Our bird environment, our technologies are broken and, dis and disabled. So this means that he referred that it's many, the disability is in the limitation of the technology and the environment. The environment is actually create obstacles. Like in the previous photo that the person who used wheelchair He, he, he it usually move on on even ground surface or on ramps. So this means that the environment has to be adapted to to actually help the disabled people. Or we have to come with new technologies. We have to come with some innovation in some ways uh, which can climb and ascend stairs. So this means that actually technology is very important. For example, if we, for us as normal people, healthy, healthy people, actually we, technology make our life easier. So how we can imagine that for disabled, for disabled people, what can the technology can contribute to them? It actually can make things possible. It can make them actually, to some extent, restore some of their lost functions. So, so if we see, if we look here about mechatronics and biomechatronics, uh, as some of you are familiar with mechatronics, mechatronics is interdisciplinary, is interdisciplinary between different fields. It's, it's between mechanical engineer, electronic systems, computer systems, and computer and software. So the mechatronic is kind of interdisciplinary between all of these. So in mechatronics, we try to solve an engineering problem to find an optimal solution using the, the noise in mechanical engineer, electronic engineer, control, control systems, and computer science. For biomechatronics, it's many the same like mechatronic. It's kind, it's kind of branch of mechatronic systems, but we add another circuit. It's about biology. So it's the biology of human is part of the mechatronic system now. We talk about bionic camp. We talk about prosthesis. We talk about assistive devices to help people and disabled people to to live like normal life. To actually, to some extent, to make to to improve their quality of life. So the biomechatronic is as well. It's interdisciplinary. It's Actually, it's all the mechatronic feet in addition to biology. So if we see this diagram here, it's talk about physiological motor control, the central nervous system control inside the human, how the human control his movement, how he control his hand, how he control his head. So actually, if we see here the brain, the brain sends like kind of control signals, it's it's similar to any closed view control systems we use it in eagle machines. So the human, the brain, send the control signals to the spinal reflex loop. So he send it to the, the reflex control. At the same time, this reflex control, it's kind of adaptive control. It actually adapts based on the experience which the human gained during his life. For example, when we start to walk, 
we start to learn to walk first we, we start to stand and we drop we start to walk few steps and we drop so we learn ourselves our, by ourselves and we build by our own knowledge so this own knowledge it can be used to kind of make the controller the reflex controller adaptive adaptable and the control signal so the control the output from the reflex control it send command to the muscle to perform the activities which the human want to do this muscle will generate force in on the skeleton and as well there is inside the human body there are sensors dynamic sensors which can give you information about the motion the, the sense the field sense so all of these are used for closed loop control and this is inside the human if we see outside the skeleton is connected to outside world we can for example when we walk our head is touching the environment and when we move or carry something our hand is touching the external world so this is how the human control and perform his activities but consider that human may have some accidents which can create impairment and uh, this environment will, will actually create disability and handicap person so this disability can be having doing a problem having in training or spinal cord injury or the signal which coming from the brain had a problem the modulation signal or the control signal so this can be having doing a spinal cord complete spinal cord injury or incomplete spinal cord injury which can make the person paralyzed he can't move at all or a stroke happens and destroys some of the brain nervous system which affect on the on the some motor skills which the human gained during uh, his his life on his normal life or parkinson which as well affect his movement he actually his hand for example he start to shake he can't carry things properly or amputated he become amputee he make accident and he lost some of his limb so all of this disability we affect that this control loop which in here if he become amputated so he lost some of his skeleton if he had a stroke this means that the motivation signal and the control signal were not uh, transferred properly so all of this we want to use mechatronics to help these disabled people and make their life better so if we look at this diagram this diagram that the this one in the bottom is a normal uh, diagram for a uh, central nervous system which have here we have the controller central nervous system here we have the higher central nervous which happen in the brain it send the command to the spinal cord which has a reflex controller this reflex controller we send the activation signal to the muscle which we can consider the human muscle as the motors and inside the human there are some physiological sensory system which can give him feel sensing and motion feel of touch and this send create force on his uh, skeleton so if we consider this human lost some of his parts or he can't move his, uh, his some of his limbs this means that we can in why part here we can add some mechanical assistive device which can be controlled and be part of the mechatronic system we can use orthosis for example some people has foot drop which actually when they walk they can't control the dorsal flexion movement and plantar flexion movement of the foot so actually it's it's drop and it's hit the ground which may create him it make him to uh, 
like uh, uh, four. So he's, he's, he can't do uh, proper uh, foot clearance because he can't control probably the movement of the foot. So this means that he can use orthosis or he used to his, he become amputated so he can use prosthesis. These are mechanical devices which can be attached to his or the residual cramp for in case of the prosthesis. Or we can use controller if he can't send the human has a problem in his brain and he can't send proper or in his spinal cord and he can send the proper activation signal to the muscle but the muscle is working properly we can create kind of artificial controller and this artificial controller can generate FES which is a prevention for functional electrical stimulation it's send kind of activation signal it's kind of electrical signal to the muscle and control the muscle movement which can control the muscle contraction and generate force which can help him to move his muscle and move his leg or his hand uh, this this is is very important for precise people as well to make kind of exercise and move his limb because if the person is precise or has a problem precise and he can't move his limbs what will happen after time his muscle will become weak and when muscle become weak he it will affect his health and his immunity system and it will affect his life so this means that he need to practice and to have to move his muscle either doing exercise someone move his hand or we use functional electrical stimulation to stimulate the muscle and as well if we talk about external orthosis of prosthesis it can be passive or it can be active and when we talk about biomechatronic and mechatronic usually we talk about active which there is actuator there is artificial actuator or artificial muscle which can contribute and can generate uh, and can give power to the system which to the orthosis or prosthesis to move it as well we have some sensors to control the artificial controller or to control the orthosis and prosthesis or to control the motor so this in white blocks it's kind of artificial blocks it's kind of artificial system it's kind of, of biomechatronic system and it's kind of mechatronic system integrated with biological system which is a human these together we call it biomechatronic so the biomechatronics application it can be used in prosthesis either upper hemp or lower hemp it can for the it can be a prosthesis has many categories it can be controlled by emg electromyography signal which the signal comes from the muscle or another application of the biomechatronic is exoskeleton which can be as well upper or lower hemp exoskeleton it can be used for precise people who can't walk to make them walk or it can be used for uh, in industry for jobs which uh, uh, like for example worker work in factory and he has to assembly and he has to do a lot of assembly while he is standing or why he is bending he, he is knee bending his knee so he can't stand like this for a longer time but if we use the exoskeleton this means that we make his life easier or in rehabilitation robotics so we can use robotics and biomechatronic to help physiotherapy and the clinician and especially with covid 19 now and like uh people has like new motor problem they need to go regulator to physiotherapy and to do a lot of rehabilitation and because of because of social destining for example so we can depend on robotics more 
and we can as well use rehabilitation group to support rehabilitation in homes and home-based rehabilitation. So now I will start to talk about and give some more detail about prosthesis. So I will start with prosthesis as one of the applications for biomechatronics. If we consider the level of amputation for the human, if we talk about the RIM amputation, we have different level of amputations based on the way the amputation will happen. We can have transiatic amputation, which is below elbow amputation. We have transhemorrhagic amputation, which is above elbow. We have four quarter amputation, which actually above the shoulder. We have shoulder disarticulation amputation, which uh, the amputation happens through the, the shoulder joint. We have wrist disarticulation, which happens through the wrist joint. For your IM, we have transfemoral amputee, which if the amputation happened above the knee, we have transradial amputation. If the amputation happened below the knee, we have knee disarticulation, we have foot amputation, we have hip disarticulation. These are the most common amp amputation errors. If we talk about the majority of amputees around the world, the higher percentage of amputation usually happen for blue knee amputee. It's for transradial amputation. And the next, the next in the list in the regarding to the percentage of the amputation from the world population is above knee amputation. So if we consider here, this person here, this cat, is for above knee amputee. This is a person, he is unilateral amputee, he used only one of his leg above the knee. So he has his ZYM here, he has his stump. Okay, so this, this stump here, we need to connect the prostatic. If we look at the prostatic here, the prostatic is actually is consists of socket, this socket, it's actually it's attached to the stump, so the socket is uh, it's connect the prostatic leg to the amputee. We have here the prostatic knee model uh, unit. We have prostatic foot unit. So we need to attach all of this like in this photo. So we want to attach all of this to the human so the human can interact to the environment. So if we consider the prosthetic leg as a device, this device interact, interact with the environment, so there is interaction between the prosthesis and the environment, which the environment will be different train. It can be river ground, it can be uneven train, it can be stair, it can be whatever, what type of environment or train. And at the same time, the prosthesis, it's interact, it's connected to the amputee. So the amputee has to control the prosthesis movement. And at the, at the same time, the environment will affect on both amputee and the environment. If we See here this photo. This is here. Actually, there was video here. Sorry, yeah, that's not working. Uh, if we see here, this is the first photo. Is for something common in uh, mechanical systems and many in robotics. It's called passive dynamic walking. This passive dynamic walking. It's if we see here, we have kind of ramp. So we have kind of ramp, and we had this mechanical system which is made from wood. It has kind of legs. If we just lift it under the gravity, it will start to walk. It's there are some toys which walk by this way. So it walk under the gravity. 
we find this concept has been used in prosthesis, especially in mechanical prosthesis, which doesn't have any control, any actuator. It's actually the human himself here, when he tried to control the prosthesis, he has to push, to push his residual limb. If we consider this one here as his prosthesis, and this is residual limb. Here, I don't have any actuator. If I just push and move the energy from my residual dam to the prosthesis, I can control its movement. I can regulate its movement. So the human do that actually to work with the passive prosthesis or mechanical prosthesis. But, with the, but the problem is sometimes I can't regulate the energy. I move it from my residual dam to the prosthesis. I may move extra energy. So in this case, there are some category of prosthesis which is based on adaptive damping. It's kind of damper which will dissipate the extra energy and we create the, move, the movement of the energy from the residual hem to the prosthesis using some dampers, and these dampers are controlled. So if we see this one here, this is here. If we look here in this one, this is a prosthetic knee joint. Inside here, there is hydraulic cylinder, similar to this one. This is what is inside. So if I draw, this is kind of And this is a egg. So it's kind of something like this. So this hydraulic cylinder, it will work as adaptive damper. So this means that I will control the damping inside it. So here, if we look at this one inside here, the knee will bend. The knee, the bending will happen. The knee will bend or flex. When the knee flex, that the, the, uh, this cylinder will move down. So the down, it's mean that they are friction. And if the egg will move this way, this means that it will move up. So up is extensive. So if we want to have friction and extension. So based on the energy moved, based on the energy moved from the GYM, from the upper M, I can control if I want to, uh, to move the egg this way or that way. Based on the energy I regulated coming from here. Here I don't have any actuator. So here, this cylinder, we have here two motors. This is one motor. This is second motor. These motors, it we have the system inside here. It has hydraulic cylinder and hydraulic manifold. All of this as one piece. It has some valves. It has some non-return valve. We have here non-return valve. These valves will not allow the flow to move this direction. So the flow can't move in this direction, but it can move in that direction. So this one, the flow can move in that direction, but it can't move in that direction. So what we have in here, and we have here servo motor. This servo motor, it controls throttle valve. This throttle valve, it controls the throttle ring which can control the damping. So we have this valve which control the throttling or the damping when it moves in friction direction, when it, this cylinder moves down. And this one, the extension valve, it control the damping when the cylinder moves up. So if we consider this one here, 
if we consider if we consider this one now here if we want to move the sender down if the sender start to move down so what having moved down this means that it's a start to flex so the flow in this area want to move this way it can move this way because this is check, this is check valve or, or non return valve it allow movement in this way and here it can allow to move here only if the of, if the pressure in this area is more than the the spring box so this one will be used as pressure control valve so it will have kind of a spring and this spring has a stiffness so we can control the amount of uh, when this valve open if the pressure exceed the pressure uh, the maximum pressure and this is very important because if the are extra load has been applied on the on the on the cylinder for example i stand or i zoom it on one on the prosthetic head instead of destroying the damper or destroying the sea the, the sea the hydraulic sea which to prevent the leakage it will open for safety and here the flow can't move because the, this is check valve can't allow movement in that direction. So only way the valve can move is that direction. The flow can move in that direction. When the flow come here, he will find this throttle valve. This throttle valve will be controlled based on the damping I want. If I want the egg to have more damping, so it means that I will I will have more closing for this valve, for the friction valve. If I want less damping, this means that I will open it, or I will open it a little bit. If I want to move up, so this means that we want to move that direction, to rotate in that direction. This means that flow here want to move that direction. So if it comes to this direction, he can't move in that direction because this is sick valve will not allow that. And it can't move here, this direction, but it can move in that direction. And the value of damping is controlled through this extension valve. So here we can use microprocessor. We can use the microprocessor to control the damping and you create, you create the energy moved from residual hemp to the prosthesis. And the actuator used here, these two thirds of actuator will be small actuators because it's just to control the opening and the closing of the valve. It, it doesn't provide positive energy or power to rotate the joint. Because if I want to put actuator here to rotate and control the movement of this head, this means that I will need bigger actuator to have more power. But for this one microprocessor, it's just a small actuator, a small servo motor. It's just to control the opening and the closing of the valve. Here in at Einstein University, uh, for undergraduate student, they actually make this design for this adaptive microprocessor. Uh, and actually, if we see here, this one here, this is a they designed for the hydraulic dumper, and they were using using motor. This is a motor. This is a DC motor. This is an actuator to control to control the damping of this link and you get the energy moving and this link will be attached to the human so this is one this is here how we 
used mechatronic to solve the amputees problem and instead of using mechanical prosthesis which actually can't control or you create the energy moved from the human to the prosthesis the human has to control it by himself we can use this microprocessor one this is another category of bowart leg prosthesis this is is industrial one it used motor it has very powerful motor to control the movement and provide the power for the need to ascend the stair and to walk in unstructured environment and this one has a lot of sensors it has here if we see this one this power knee it has it what it connect it's it's attached to the amputated leg and it's the same on the healthy leg and the intact leg they use some sensors they use here ebm module which has some has accelerometer and gyroscope to monitor the movement of the healthy leg they use here foot in sore equipped with some force sensors to detect if the leg is in touch with the ground or not and they have some control technique to make the prosthetic leg replicate the movement of the healthy leg but with phase shift and they use bluetooth to transfer the data from the intact leg or the healthy leg to the prosthetic leg so based on that concept we did some work as well this is this is a design for bowart prosthetic knee it has actuator so here if we see here this is this motor okay and it has some mechanical mechanism to transfer the energy and uh, and magnify the, the the force so we use here boy screw mechanism okay which can control when the motor this motor rotate it will control the rotation and the extension or flexion of this knee joint and we equipai this one with some sensors some you'd say tensometer to measure the angle you'd say to measure the force we added some sensors to monitor the system so this is actually the system we equipai with out of sensor and it's actually portable so we, we were using a sizable battery here we added some strain gauges and force sons for sensor on the bottom of the foot okay so from this point i want to talk about the the big picture of the a smart wearable robotics configuration what is the main component of the smart wearable robotics if we look here on the right here we will find the controller usually in the wearable robotics if it's prosthesis if it's exoskeleton usually we use multi level control we have higher level control the higher level control is many used to find and estimate and you could recognize the user intent what is the user want if he want to move his leg he want to stand he want to sit down he want to walk so the controller has to know the user intention based on this user intention the controller we uh, if he find it we try to control the wearable device if it's prosthesis or exoskeleton we have made a heavy control because the human walking is is divided into few phases we have a stance phase and the swing phase the stance phase when the human yek is touching the ground and the swing phase when the human yek is in the air it doesn't touch the ground 
So in this mediated control, he, we have to identify at which phase of the walking gait cycle is the human now. Because based on this human gait cycle, the control parameters will be different. And finally, we have UEV control. The UEV control is directly control the actuator. So the UEV control is mainly send the control command to the device structure and actuation. This UEV control is normally it can be BID control, which many used in most of the machines. So the UEV control send the control commands to the structure and the actuator of the system so this is if this is a prosthesis or the exact uh, exoskeleton this device assistive device is connected to the user and both of them are interacting with the environment so in order to do this proper control we have to use many sensors sensors to give us information about the environment state sensors to give us information about the device state sensors to give us information about the user state and to identify its intent these sensors which can give information about user state it can be biological sensors or biopotential sensors for example similar to emg or eeg sensors which can give information about muscle activities or brain activities. If we see this hand, this is prosthetic hand. This prosthetic hand has five actuators to control the movement of each finger has only one actuator. Although the human hand has many degrees of freedom. The human hand, it can, I think it's uh, more than 20 degrees of freedom. But here, this one, because the weight, it has five degrees of freedom. So if I want to do certain grasping mode, for example, I want to hold this pen. I have to do this this way. I want to hold this key, so I do it this way you will find that I have different grasping mode. If I want to hold this mobile, so I hold it this way, I have different grasping mode, which the number of hands, or number of fingers involved in this grasping mode is different. It can be only pinching, it's just these two finger. It can be more fingers. The power as well is different. So how I control this, hand how to find the important is to find the user intent so we have to put some sensors on the human to identify on his muscle on his residual muscle to identify his intent so some of the work is we did it here at ensemble university so we here use uh commercial mario arm device this device it's used it can measure it has emg sensor which can measure, measure the mass activity as well it has imu sensor it has an ISO measurement unit sensor which it can as well use to measure the velocity and the acceleration movement of the hand so we used this one and we use that as well the hip motion, which sensor we can monitor the hand or finger movement. And we try to use to build kind of regression models using machine learning to find the relation between the hand, the fingers movement, and the muscle activity, and the EMG sensors, and uh, as well the the EMG sensor and the IMU and the hand activity. And we used this data and we used neural network. It's kind of one of the machine learning technique. And we built kind of regression model.
So the controller can be used to predict what is the user want. So if we return to this diagram, using this wearable sensor, the user can just try to act as he want to hold a pen. So the controller, the higher level control, which is use machine learning, he will try to predict from that signal what he wants to do. And we send after that the command and the controller to the every control, your every control, which will start to control the motors, the actuators of the static hand to make the movement that I want. Now we will talk another category of the uh, repetition robotics. We talk about prosthesis, RIM and OIM. As well, biomechatronics can be used for repetition. If we see here in this photo, this is person who holds the end effect of the robot, the end of the robot. So both of them are holding like this. Imagine if this person has neuromotor problems. He has some neurological problems. He can't control his hand properly. And we want to do some rehabilitation for him. We want to train him to do this activity. Instead of the physical therapy, hold his hand and start to move his hand, or give him to move, or just help if he move it incorrectly, he just to correct his movement. The robot can do the same. We can use the robot to help in rehabilitation process. This robot can be used as just holding the end effector, or it can be used as exoskeleton, which is covering all the joints, similar to here. Both options are available in rehabilitation. Although this exoskeleton, it has, it should has more safety regulations because if any error happen, it may destroy the joints. This photo here is for exoskeleton type, and they build this mechanical by this mechatronic device which is consist of mechanical structure, consist of uh, actuators, sensors, and some sensors. And they you do here to make patient do the repetition exercise without any boring, they integrate it with game. So this exoskeleton will work as joystick, active joystick. So he will start to so, for example, you want to move this ball, so he will start to move, and he will see that he wants to move it to, to get to this target. But he move it incorrectly, so the robot will correct his movement and help him. This is here, photo, not for the exoskeleton type, but for the end effector. This is just Brianna serial manipulator which is just robot, which move in 2D. And here, they use it to, for repetition exercise as well. This is as well end effector type, but this is Cartesian robot. This is just two axes. It can move, it's similar to the CNC machine, main machine. It can have like X, Y table. It can move in this direction and that direction. So this is just Brana X, Y table. It has some sensors here, you would say, to measure the interaction force between the human and the robot. And actually, it's this robot, it guides the human movement. And if he did something wrong, it corrected for him. So it can be used for to help him in repetition. If we see this, this is another example of application of mechatronics and biomechatronics in healthcare and rehabilitation. This person 
is precise, so he can't move. He was waiting. But sometimes he may want to stand to, uh, he is in supermarket and he wants to get something from self. So it has a structure, it is curtain structure, which can move and lift him up. As well, I told the privacy that if you are precise or you couldn't, you haven't moved your uh, limbs and use your muscle for a long time, your muscle will become weak. And we start to, to become smaller, smaller. And your body will be weak and your immunity system will be weak. And it will affect, will make your life in risk. So in this case, it will be good if we make this person every day do some exercise and move and walk for a few steps. So this device as well can help him. He can stand, he can put his leg in this photo on the ground, on the ground, and it's just we try, it has actuators here. So the joint has actuators, it has active assistant, friction and extension. So it has actuators here. If you see this photo, there are motor inside. So this motor will start to move his limbs. This is way help him to maintain his muscle health and his own health. This is an example of repetition robotics. It's exoskeleton based for lower hemp. This system is uh, called Yokomot. Is this system is just if we check, it consists of mechanical structure. It has mechanical structure here. It has actuators to to help you to move the patient joints. It has sensors to measure the parameters like force, angle, position, orientation, torque, and it has a controller. So it has controller to control the system, and they are interface system which how I way connect this exoskeleton type to the human and this system in order to be powered it need some power source it need power supplies and electrical system so this is just short presentation uh, about what is the application of Mechatronic in healthcare and uh, repetition, and what is and this is is called biomechatronics. And so it to be yet because I had some internet uh, problem, and as well because of the size of the presentation, uh, there were some videos here which I can't uh, actually spare. Uh, I'm ready if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. You have worked a lot on uh, recapitalization. So, so thank you so much sir, for seeing your wonderful presentation. And, uh, and uh, let me look into some questions, sir. Okay. Sir, can you once again explain uh, the application of mic, uh, this one, uh, mechatronics in uh, tamping? Mechatronics in what, sorry? And uh, damping, damping. Damping, okay, okay. Uh, okay, uh, actually, for the, uh, if we talk about, uh, I talked about the damping in uh, prosthesis. The prosthesis, the whole prosthesis has, can be classified into three types or three categories. The first category is mechanical prosthesis. This mechanical is just mechanical joints, which doesn't have, any control. This mechanical joint, it can be just mechanical uh, mechanism, which can be single axis or uh, four bar mechanism or six bar mechanism. And others has dumbbell, has mechanical dumbbell. 
But this mechanical dumbbell, it's just, it's just adjusted once. We can't regulate it doing the walking, the movement. We just put this dumbbell to dissipate the energy. I said there is energy because the amputee has his residual here. So he has to put more energy. If we consider that, for example, transfemial amputee, the person who has is above knee amputee, he actually he actually put more energy in order to walk compared to the healthy subject because he he has he has to move energy from his residual limb to the prosthetic device in order to compensate for the deficiency happens during just his health. So if I consider I have mechanical joint without any damping, so if he moved any energy from here to there, actually maybe the energy will be too high. If it's too high, so he puts it like that, the egg will be, will be kind of uh, sudden shock at the end. It will be hit at the end. So it will be at the end of the egg. When it's a fully, fully extent, it will hit. So in this case, I need damping. Consider that if I am going down stair, I have a stair like this. I'm going down the stair. If you if you going down a stair, you find that you dissipate energy. I didn't like, for example, I put my head here. I have to put resistance on my head. This resistance to to prevent the bucking. Otherwise, if there is no damping or resistance, when I go down the stair, it may be my head bent quickly and the flex quickly and the foot up. So this damping, if I am using just mechanical damper, which is fixed, is not controlled through, in, through the activity, I may fall down or I may put incorrect damping value. So for the damping category, which is the second category, so the first category is mechanica, which doesn't have any control, the second category is microprocessor adaptive damping, which actually the damper will be adaptive. Based on the situation, if I go, I'm going down the stair, I need different damping from I am walking. And as well, within the going down the stair, each step or each movement has different damping value. So using damping here, using damping here, it's mean that I am trying to use actuator to regulate the damping coefficient. Is this is was the question? I answer the question or yeah, good sir, good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Sas uh, Saswata asked two questions. Sir, any speech developer system is possible through medical mechatronics? Uh, can you address? Say that again, sorry. Uh, sir, any uh, speech development system possible through mechatronic system? Medical mechatronics. Yeah, yeah you, you took that if, if the wearable system is considered as mechatronic system, yeah? Sir, your thanks. Okay. If, if we talk about the mechatronic system, so the main component of mechatronic system is we have mechanical system, we have electrical system, we have control system, we have software or computer science. All of these exist in wearable robot. Because if I talk about passive, passive, devices or passive because in rehabilitation you may use passive devices this passive is not mechatronic but if we i have actuators i have control system i have mechatronic so these are considered as mechatronic system sir uh, sir the question is another another question is 
um, sir, for learning disability, for learning disability, is it uh, is there any possibility to improve uh, through biomedical mechatronics? Uh, for disability, you mean that uh, I can't, I, I haven't heard the last part of the question? For disability, yeah? yeah. Sir, sir uh, is there any uh, development for learning disability through biomedical uh, mechatronics? Yeah, uh, okay. First of all, if I want to solve any problem, okay, if I consider the mechatronics system as uh, okay, let's say it this way. The engineering is defined is a problem solving. I have is a problem solving of real life problems. I have real life problems and I want to engineer this problem to solve it. Mechatronic, it's part of the engineering, which actually I try to use interdisciplinary feed interdisciplinary topics from mechanical, mechatronics, uh, so from mechanical, electrical, electronic, and the control systems to find an optimal solution. And actually, he, when I talk about mechatronic, I'll talk about optimal solution, which the best solution as possible. Because when I solve a problem, I may solve it mechanically only, but not it's not the best solution. I may solve it using software. For example, or electrical. So the mechatronic, I try to find the integration between these sciences and these topics to find the optimal solution. For biomechatronic, I have to add another discipline to the mechatronic, which is the biology and the reputation. I want to understand in order to solve the problem, if I need to design prosthesis. I have to understand the problem and what is the amputee's need in order to design the product that fit my requirements. So if I am dealing with a rehabilitation robotic, which actually uh, try to rehabilitate person with stroke. So this means that I have to understand some knowledge and read about stroke. What is the patient usually need? Okay, uh, I answered that question or? Sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. And, uh, Arti, I'm sorry, Ms. Arti, Ms. Ramya, uh, Mr. Patumnabhan, Mr. Krishna Kumar, you have been allowed to ask a uh, doubt. So if you are able to come and you can uh, clarify your doubts. Okay. Uh, comment about what, sorry? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, some people say, uh, are interested to uh, come and ask the question uh, directly. So I have allowed them to come. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. To? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, sir, thank sure. you so much. And I think they are not coming. So, thank you so much uh, for spending your valuable time with us. So you okay. Thank you, and sorry again for the delay at starting because actually I'm using my uh, mobile network, uh, the data from mobile, my mobile network. Yeah, yes, sir. No, no, it went, went fine, sir. No issues. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we okay, will thank you. Our, uh, program, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll meet in uh, tomorrow's uh, day after tomorrow's again. Thank you.